Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the Earth Fairy button cow. This is a beautiful cow with, uh, made by a very special skein of yarn. And it has two buttons. And we use the eyelets here, the eyelet row of this pattern to use be used as buttonholes. It's also finished with a very pretty edging to finish it off. This cow here is from the written pattern from the photographs and it is one skein of Aracania Tokenau Multi. And I use the full skein which equates to 139 yards. However, when I first published this pattern on the Fiberflux blog, a lot of you were having trouble finding this yarn. If you can find this yarn, I used one skein of it, and that's great. However, if you'd like to substitute yarn, I'm going to use for this tutorial, this is the Lion Brand Heartland yarn. This is the Joshua Tree colorway, and um, it's a similar green and it has like a heathered look and it's very soft. So I'm going to use that for the tutorial just to give you an option of something that might be readily available at the craft store. So for this project, you'll need a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. You'll need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle for weaving in your ends and sewing the buttons on at the end. And you'll need two buttons. I grabbed a few buttons that I thought would be nice for this project. This is um, like a flower button. These are some cute leaf wood buttons. And then the buttons I used for this project um, are coconut wood buttons. And all of these can be found at the craft store or something similar. You want to make sure when you are selecting your buttons that it can pass through this eyelet hole because that's what you'll be using as your buttonholes. Um, some of you on Ravelry also have shared your projects and I thank you for that. And you used the decorative edge as your buttonholes and that is a great idea. Just make sure your button can pass through it. So let's get started. I'm going to unbutton this just to give you an idea of the dimensions. We open our scarf up, our cowl. The cowl measures about seven inches wide, and I worked mine for about 31 inches long, and that gave a nice, comfortable cowl that you can wrap around your neck. We're going to begin our cowl by putting a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, bring up the loop and tighten it onto your hook. We're going to make a starting chain of 25. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Make sure your starting chain is not too tight. You want it to be fairly loose so it won't draw up the bottom of your work. The foundation row of our cowl we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. So one, two, three, and four. We'll work a double crochet into that chain. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Next, we'll work a double crochet in each chain across all the way to the end. And I just wanted to give a tip back to this when we did the starting chain. 
If you're having trouble, some of you have asked, if you're having trouble getting your starting chain loose enough when you're beginning, if it's, if it's too tight, um, a little tip that you can do is to go up a hook size just for your starting chain and then switch to the hook size for the pattern for the remainder of your project. And that might help you to get your starting chain a little bit looser. So you can try that. If it's still tight, try another going up another hook size until you're satisfied with the looseness of your starting chain. You want it to be too loose, but you want it to be loose enough to have that elasticity. So again, we're just working double crochets in each chain all the way across our row. And again, this yarn that I'm using is a great substitute and it's pretty easy to find online and in craft stores as well. And it comes in a lot of kind of rustic colors like our original cow does as well. You can even do stripes or something like that if you choose. So we're coming up to the end here. Again, we're working a double crochet in every chain. all the way across to get the bottom of that. Okay, let's get some more yarn here. Okay, double crochets all across. And in that very last chain to finish it off. Okay, so your foundation row will look like that. Okay, let's move on to row one. We're going to chain three and turn. One, two, three. Turn our work. This counts as a double crochet. So in the next stitch, because this counted as a double crochet, so in the next stitch, and in each stitch across, we're going to work a double crochet. Okay, so I'm going to work a double crochet in each stitch across. So we're coming up to the end of the row, and again, we just worked a double crochet all the way across in each stitch. We're also going to work a double crochet. We have this turning chain here. We'll work a double crochet into the turning chain, that topmost stitch. Okay, so row one is complete. It should look something like this. It's a pretty uh, basic looking strip so far. So let's move on to row two. Row two is our eyelet row. If we come back to our cowl, we have a pretty eyelet row. So row two will work the eyelet, okay? So for this row, we're going to chain three and turn. One, two, three, and turn our work. Then, this turning chain again counts as a double crochet. So then we're going to, in the next stitch, because this counts as a double crochet, so in the next stitch we're going to work a double crochet. Then we're going to chain two, one, two. Then we're going to skip the next stitch, and in the stitch after that we'll work a double crochet. Just like that. So here we've made our first eyelet. So let's keep going. We're going to do this all the way across. We're going to chain two, skip the next stitch, in the stitch after that work a double crochet. Get some more yarn. Chain two, Skip the next stitch. In the stitch after that, work a double crochet. Chain two. Skip the next stitch. In the chain, uh, excuse me, stitch after that, work a double crochet. So you can see we have several eyelets now. Chain two. Skip the next stitch. In the stitch after that, work a double crochet. 
chain two, skip the next stitch, in the stitch after that, work a double crochet. Chain two, skip the next stitch, in the stitch after that, work a double crochet. Chain two, skip the next stitch, in the stitch after that, work a double crochet. This is a very easy way to create eyelets or decorative holes in your work. Chain two, skip the next stitch, in the stitch after that, work a double crochet. Chain two, Get some more yarn, chain two, skip the next stitch, in the stitch after that, work a double crochet. We're going to finish off this row by working a double crochet into the turning chain as well. Make sure you pick up two loops of that. There we go. Okay, so our eyelet row is complete. It'll look kind of like that. We're moving on to row three. To work row three, chain three. One, two, three, turn your work. Next, in the first space, we're gonna work this row into the spaces and not the stitches. Previously, we've worked into the stitches, but this row will be working into the spaces. The spaces of this row that we just did were creating by, created by working these chain twos across the top, and that opened up and made a space. So in each one of these spaces, all the way across, we're going to work two double crochets right into that chain two space from the previous row. Okay, so it'll look like that. If, you, if you've ever worked a granny square, then you'll know exactly what I mean. So work a two double crochets into each space all the way across. Okay. So we're coming up to the end of the row, and again, we just work two double crochets in each space. Space created by working chain two in the previous row, right into those eyelet holes is where we're working. So once you're finished the row, you'll also work a double crochet into the top of this turning chain. Just find the topmost chain, go right into there, and work a double crochet to finish off the row. Just like that, okay? So row three is complete. So you have a nice eyelet row. And then the row after that, let's work chain four, I mean, excuse me, row four. Okay, so we're gonna chain three, one, two, three. And this is similar to some of the rows we've done earlier. Okay, this counts as our first double crochet. So in the next stitch, we'll work a double crochet. In each stitch, all the way across the row. So our beginnings will kind of look like that. So we're coming up to the end of row four. And again, we just worked a double crochet in each stitch across. So work it all the way to that last stitch. And then again, work a double crochet in that turning chain as well. Sometimes it's a little fiddly, but you can kind of work your hook in there. Okay, so we've just finished row four. Row five is our last row of our pattern repeat, and that is just simply repeating row four. So we're just gonna do exactly what we did in the previous row. 
So again, chain three, one, two, three. This counts as a double crochet, so we're gonna skip that and work into the next stitch. But just a double crochet, same thing we did for row four, we're just repeating row four. So we're just gonna work a double crochet all the way across, the same exact way. So we're coming up to the end of row five, and again, row five was just simply repeating row four. So we've come up to the end, we're just working double crochets all the way across. And then to finish, we're working a double crochet in the turning chain as well to finish that off. So this is our, our pattern repeat. This is one repeat, and if you look back at our original cow, you can see the same thing is happening. This is variegated yarn, so it does look a little bit different. This is kind of a heathered yarn, so you can see the effects that different yarn will create with this pattern. And anything you want to use is your choice, really, in terms of style choices. So once you finish row five, you're just going to repeat rows two through five over and over and over again until your cow measures 31 inches from the beginning or until it is as long as you like. You can make yours a little bit more snug around the neck. You can make yours a lot longer, even into an infinity scarf length. And once you make your cow as long as you'd like it to be, then you can have the choice of adding this decorative edge along the bottom, or you can stop at this point and just have a more rectangular bottom. So I'm going to show you now how to work this fancy edge along the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn our work. This counts as our first single crochet. So go ahead and work a single crochet into the next stitch. To work a single crochet, just insert, insert your hook into the stitch, bring up a loop, yarn around the hook, bring it through both loops. So we're just working a single crochet all the way across to set up the foundation of our edge here. Give it a nice sturdy base which to build the stitches from. So we're just working a single crochet all the way across. And again, this edging is completely optional, but it does look very pretty and adds a lot of interest to the garment. So again, we're just working single crochets. And this will give you a nice, straight, even edge to work the rest of our edging on. Get some more yarn. Okay, we're coming up to the end here. And we'll also work a single crochet into this turning chain, the same way we've done for previous rows, right into that top chain there, okay? So the first row of our edge is complete. So for the second row of our edging, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four, and turn. We're gonna skip the next two stitches, one, two. And in the next stitch, we're going to work a single crochet, and then chain four. One, two, three, and four. We're gonna continue in the sequence, skip two, and in the, in the next stitch, after that, single crochet. One, two, three, four chains. Skip the next two stitches. In the stitch after that, work a single crochet. Chain four. One, two, three, and four. Skip the next two stitches in the stitch after that. Work a single crochet. Next chain four. One, two, three, and four. Skip the next two stitches in the stitch after that. 
work a single crochet. We'll get some more yarn. Chain four. One, two, three, and four. Skip the next two stitches in the stitch after that. Work a single crochet. We're going to skip the next two stitches. Chain four. One, two, three, four. And in that very last stitch, which also will be the turning chain, just at the very end there, I have to look for it. It's a little bit buried because we worked a single crochet. We're going to work a single crochet to finish that row. So what we have now are a series of scalloped loops that we've created. So it's looking a little bit like our edging, but we still have one more row to go. To work the last row of our edging and of our cowl to complete it, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to be working all of our stitches into these spaces, these chain four spaces from the previous row. So what we're going to do is we're going to work in each one of these spaces, we're going to work three single crochets, chain two, three single crochets. That will give us these beautiful open points, okay? So let me show you. Work three single crochets, one, two, three, chain two, one, two. Three more single crochets, one, two, and three. So let me get my hook out of the way. You can see the very first one we've created, and it looks just like our other ones. Okay, let's do a few more together. This edging is pretty easy, so we don't need to do all of them, but we'll do a few together. So three single crochets, one, two, three, chain two, one, two, and three single crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, so it's looking very much like our cow over here. So let's do one more together. Three single crochets, one, two, three, chain two, one, two, three single crochets, one, two, and three. Okay, so it's looking very, very pretty at the end. So I'm going to let you work on these two and we'll rejoin in just a moment. We're just going to keep working in each one of these holes. Three single crochets, chain two, three single crochets, all in the same space. And then you just repeat that for each loop. So I went ahead and worked all the way across. So we're left with one hole. This very last one is done very slightly differently. Let's, so one, two, three single crochets. We just need to round it off and give it a nice clean finish. So there's a very slight difference. Chain two, same way. Three single crochets, same way. One, two, three. But to finish this off, if we were to just finish, it would kind of just flare out the side there. So what we're also going to do for just this very last one is work a slip stitch into the space. So insert your hook, bring up a loop. Bring the loop that's on your hook through the loop that's already on your hook. Just like that, okay? So that, see how that finishes that edge off. So our cowl is complete. It looks like this one. So let's um, move on to finishing your cowl. Doing the finish work, weaving in the ends, getting the buttons on. So we'll do this part next. You're going to need two buttons for your project. And to finish it, you're going to also need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. Okay, so what you're gonna do, when you've repeated rows two through five, as long as you want it to be, I made mine 31 inches. 
You can break the yarn. Go ahead and fasten that off. And then you take your tapestry needle. You'll have two ends. So just take your tapestry needle, thread the yarn onto your tapestry needle. Actually, mine got a little splitty, so I'm going to give it a fresh cut. Sometimes when you're working with yarn and it's been moving around a lot, it can the plies can come apart a little bit. So just give it a fresh cut if that's happening. So then you'll after you're done threading, you'll just take your tapestry needle, go in one direction. Then you'll come in the other direction. Just like that. You can take your tapestry needle out, take your scissors, snip that little tail. And I like to just give it a little, straighten it out a little bit. Okay, you can do the same for this other tail down here. Now I wanted to show you, before we sew the button on, buttons, um, I wanted to show you how I configured them, how I placed them onto the piece. So again, I love all your pictures on Ravelry of this project. Some of you used these decorative eyelet holes as buttonholes. Some of you have used this edging as your buttonhole. Either one is fine. It's your accessory. You can wear it however you want. So we're going to open this up. Now again, our edging is on one end, so come down at the other end. And I made mine, let me get my ruler here. I put mine, if you have the piece facing you, I put one down in the corner and then went up a ways and put the other. So you can take, I'll just measure it just to help you out if you're wanting, wanting to know exactly where to place it. So this is in the bottom left-hand corner. And then let's say about from the bottom edge about six and a half, six to six and a half inches high. I did the next one. So that'll give you an idea of where to sew these buttons. Then when you lay your scarf, you'll just fold it this way and then bring this decorative edging side over and you can just button it, button your cowl just like so. So it just kind of folds over like that, okay? So let's take our piece that we've been working on. We're going to take a piece of matching yarn, about eight inches long or so. Thread your tapestry needle. Now obviously, this one is a lot shorter. So I'll show you how to do one of the buttons. I put one of them in the bottom, again, in the bottom left-hand corner. The other one was about six or so inches up. So I'll show you how to do this button, just to show you how it's done. So before you start, you wanna make sure your tapestry needle, the eye of it is the widest part of the needle. You wanna make sure that can easily pass through your button. If not, see if you, if you have a smaller tapestry needle or a button with smaller holes. So you're gonna place the button where you want it to go and take your tapestry needle, come up from behind the piece, come up, come back down. Again, I'm using matching yarn. Makes it look very pretty at the end, nice and finished looking. So you can do that about two or three times. Okay, and then come back down so see how that looks with the matching yarn, it looks very nice. So then just flip your piece over, take the tapestry needle out, and then I just put a few knots in it. Two or three should be just fine. Then you can take your tapestry needle and you'll have two little ends from your button. This is an end from before that we haven't woven in yet. But you can just take all these little ends, make sure you're doing this on the back side of your work so that it doesn't show and just come in one direction, come in the other direction, grab your scissors, trim that off, repeat for the other tail, 
and any other ends that you may have. So that is how you crochet the Earth Fairy button cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.